Okay. Now, let us uh, let us now take this special specific special case. The special case is 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 this. So, now my dynamics are given in this sort of form. I have x k plus 1 is given as a function x a k x k plus b k u k plus w w k. And this is this is uh, we define this for k equal 0 till n minus 1. The cost function which, which we want to minimize, we want to minimize this cost function over all such policy over all policies, cost function in is takes this form. So, the terminal cost is actually is quadratic in the terminal state in this form. So, it is x x n transpose q n x n and that the cost at, at each stage the stage wise costs are are also quadratic and in this sort of form it is x k transpose q k x k plus u k transpose r k u k. Now, the the uh, the the matrices here are of appropriate dimension. So, we should we assume that these matrices q n, q k, r k these are all square matrices a k, uh, b k uh, are matrices of appropriate dimension. So, that uh, they uh, so that this state equation can actually the dynamic uh, state dynamics can actually be written out properly. Now, we assume that these q k's are So, assume that these q k are uh, symmetric they are symmetric and um, positive positive semi definite matrices ok. And um, for all k and also assume that R k are symmetric and positive definite matrices. So, q k s are positive semi definite r k s are positive definite right. Now, the uh, now the uh, there are no constra constraints on the control actions the u k s are unconstrained unconstrained. So, we have we do not impose any constraints on the control action. The constraints actually would make the problem somewhat complicated. We are not mentioning any putting in any such constraints. The, dist, uh, the disturbances or noise w k are independent ok. Um, we are not uh, we are also not uh, assuming uh, uh, that uh, and that they have any particular distribution such as Gaussian or anything like that. They are just independent ok, but uh, we will assume that their 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 means are 0 ok. So, we will assume that they have been centered means the mean is 0 and we will also assume that their variance is finite ok. So, the second moment is finite all right. Okay, so now, uh, so this is a this is a very popular formulation of of the problem of the problem. See these uh, 
these problems arise all the time in in uh, in in control theory in in uh, in inventory management and so on the quadratic co cost is often is is a very reasonable uh, is a very reasonable cost because it uh, many many uh, uh, costs can be modeled in this sort of way where we one is trying to uh, say uh, orient uh, um, minimize the distance from a particular target or uh, mi minimize the deviation from from a certain uh, from a certain nominal value etc a lot of these errors end up taking the form of um, uh, 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 the errors that we want to minimize often end up taking the a, squ a quadratic squared quadratic type of form. So, that is that is uh, that, that is one of the motivations for this particular problem ok. So, there are many generalizations of this particular problem also, but I am not looking at any of those generalizations let us look at this 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 uh, this simplest one much more general problems can be considered for example, you can also have terms that are that involve a mixture of these q uh, u q uh, x k and u k in the in your cost. So, we are ignoring such terms here and, and for simplicity it it makes it does not it does not add my, uh, too much too much more to the problem all right ok. So, now let us apply the dynamic programming and let us now apply the dynamic programming algorithm. Okay. So, what is the what is the approach we would have to start from uh, uh, start from uh, start from the last time instant okay, and over there we define simply the uh, the the value function to be simply the terminal cost. So, we define j n of x n to be identically equal to x n transpose q n x n all right this is this is our uh, this this is uh, the initialization for the dynamic programming uh, for the dynamic programming algorithm ok. Now, what we need to do is do this um, what would be the uh, what would be the dynamic programming equation at each time step k. So, let us write j k of x k that is going to be equal to the minimi minimum of u k of the expectation of x k transpose q k x k plus u k transpose r k u k plus now j k plus 1 a k x k. So, let me write this a little neatly plus j k plus 1 of now remember I am I need to I am going to substitute in j k plus 1 x k plus 1 x k plus 1 is given through this equation. So, I am going to substitute this as a k x k plus b k u k plus w k all right ok. So, now let us let us do this uh, uh, this does not uh, help us uh, much because we do not know what the form of j k plus 1 is. So, but let us put uh, do this more uh, uh, more concretely. So, let us uh, so what what I want you to observe is that I, through these calculations they may seem a little um, in uh, you know kind of um, routine or mundane first, but the thing I want you to observe is the following that it will turn out that when I since that j k plus 1 would be quadratic and that would ensure the if j k plus 1 was quadratic was a quadratic function then this entire function that we have here the entire function that we have here would end up becoming a quadratic function of u and once it is a quadratic function of u minimizing it in uh, uh, and moreover it would be a positive uh, it would be a convex quadratic function because uh, because of the choice of because our r k's are uh, 
um, symmetric and, and so on and so forth. All of that will ensure that this is actually a, a, symmet a, a, a convex quadratic function of u alright. And, uh, when, and when I when you minimize it, it will turn out that you would get u k to be a function you would get u k by setting simply the derivative of that quadratic to be equal to 0. And on solving that equation where you the derivative is set equal to 0, the u k the optimal u k u k star would be a linear function a linear function of x k. Okay. So, when this j k is quadratic you can imagine that all the, the only terms uh, the only cross terms between x k and u k would be would be coming from this and those also would basically involve u k lean uh, a, a term where the degree of u k is 1 and the degree of x k is 1. Putting that together you would get u k star as a function of as a function of x k and it would be a linear function therefore. All right. So, let, let us let us illustrate this for k equal to n minus 1. Okay. So, let k be n minus 1. So, at k equal to n minus 1 I will now I am now referring to j n minus 1 of x n minus 1 as equal to the minimum over u n minus 1 of this x n minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1. So, this is let me just write this a little more compactly right nicely here plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus now, remember j n ok, j n is here j n is a quadratic function already ok. So, for k equal to n minus 1 I have got I what I, I have got what I wanted which is simply that I which was you know I wanted j k plus 1 to be a quadratic function. So, for j for uh, k equal to n minus 1 j n which is j uh, is, is already a quadratic function. So, all I need to do is just put this in. So, now I am going to put in x n I am going to substitute for x n from here using this ok. So, I am going to get a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1 whole thing transpose q n the same thing a, a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus w n minus 1 bracket close ok. So, the expectation is now of this this entire term. So, remember the expectation the bracket opens here and it closes here. So, there are it is a sum of all of these terms out of all of these remember x n minus 1 is just the term x n minus 1 is simply a nominal initial state. So, it is not a random variable it is not the true state realized during the problem it is just a nominal state that uh, a, any candidate state that we are starting off with ok. So, and so uh, now and we are now finding u n minus 1 as a function of that x n minus 1. Now, as as you can see here we this the um, so let us let us uh, let us try to simplify a few things here you can uh, so the last the last term here that we have this last term this term can be expanded okay this can be expanded uh, uh, so the, if you expand this term out so let me write out this the last term Okay, the last term when we expand this out let us see what kind of form it takes. See it would take the following form you I would get a term which has w n minus 1 transpose q n times this whole thing
a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 u n minus 1 right. And now the, the last term has this plus several other terms. Now, what can we say about this particular term? So, notice that because I as I said x n minus 1 is simply some constant or some deterministic um, nominal value that we have taken and u n minus 1 is also deterministic it is a function it is it is simply a function of x n minus 1 right. So, as a result of this the only randomness here is is in w n minus 1. Now, when I when I take the expectation of this particular term. So, let me write out the expectation of this what would be the expectation of this? This expectation would necessarily be 0 right. So, this term would have expectation 0 and that is because w n minus 1 is remember we assume that all the w's are of all the w's are of mean 0. So, this 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 term here would have expectation 0. Okay, so, this term would be 0. So, what you would be left with? So, essentially the only kind of terms you would be left with are uh, are are the following. You would have a term that in that is this term multiplying this term via q. You would also have a term in which w n minus 1 multiplies w n minus 1 via q right. So, there will be terms that are quadratic in uh, quadratic in these two in this and quadratic in this. So, this is the sort of term we would we would get right. So, now let me let us let us actually write that out. So, j so as a result we have j n minus 1 as a function of x n minus 1 that is equal to now minimizing minimization of over u n minus 1 of the expectation of x n minus 1 transpose q n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose r n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 transpose b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus 2 times x n minus 1 transpose a n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 u n minus 1 plus x n minus 1 transpose a n minus 1 transpose q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus the final quadratic term which would be w n minus 1 transpose q n w n minus 1 ok. So, let me uh, run you through what these terms are these terms in are simply. So, the last term here is is the product of w n minus 1 transpose q n w n minus 1. So, that is this term here the other three terms are this transpose q n times itself times this term again and that again has been expanded out what you get is uh, as a result you get a quadratic term in u n minus 1, you get a quadratic term in x n minus 1 and you get this cross term. So, remember this cross term this is with u n linear in u n linear in x n that is the sort of term you get. So, what is the lesson here? The lesson here is that now what whatever is there in the bracket let us look at what is all in the bracket and the stuff which is deterministic and the stuff which is which uh, which is uh, which is random here. The only thing that is random here is actually just this w n minus 1 this is the only quantity that is random 
right that is because x n minus 1 is fixed u n minus 1 is is obtained is deterministic as a function of x n minus 1. So, the only randomness is here. So, I can actually move my what I can do is I can move this expectation from here all the way till just here. So, this is great because now I have this is the only expectation ok and moreover this term that I have underlined this is also has nothing to do with u n minus 1 it is a constant it is a it is a it is an additive constant that you have picked up right. Now, what else is a constant here let us look at this. So, you can see this term here has is constant as far as minimization is concerned ok it is a as far uh, so this was the only det, uh, random term. So, the it was all the other terms were constant for as far as the uh, the expectation was concerned this is a constant as far as the minimization is concerned. So, it has been moved out this term is also a constant as far as minimization is concerned because it depends only on x n minus 1 this term is also a constant it depends only on x n minus 1 this uh, does not affect the minimization right. So, I have therefore left I am therefore left with only these three these two or, or you can say these three other terms ok. There is this one which is a quadratic in uh, I am left with just these three other terms which are which are going to be which are my uh, which which actually affect my minimization. The terms are this one this one and finally, this one. Now, let us observe these green green um, these green boxes you can see these are these are uh, there, there is something to be noted here these are actually quadratic terms. So, the u this term up here u appears in a quadratic form here also u appears in a quadratic form this is a bilinear form in which this is linear in u as well as in x n, but point is as far as the minimization is concerned it is just linear in u. So, this is therefore, a quadratic function of u and what kind of quadratic function well you look at this uh, the hessian here the hessian here is r n minus 1 these are supposed to be symmetric positive definite matrices. So, this is a positive definite matrix the other hessian here is b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 you can verify easily that this is all this is now a positive this is a positive semi definite matrix. So, this is a positive semi definite matrix this is a positive definite matrix. So, consequently what we are minimizing is actually a strictly convex function strictly convex quadratic function of u n minus 1 ok. So, its solution can simply be obtained by setting the derivative equal to 0. So, setting derivative or gradient with respect to u n minus 1 as 0 what we get is actually this equation we get r n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 the whole into u n minus 1 equals negative of b n minus 1 transpose q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1 ok or in other words u n minus 1 star is equal to this r n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 the whole inverse let us put a negative outside here p n minus 1 q n a n minus 1 x n minus 1. You can see what what we have got here we have got that u n u n minus 1 star is a linear function ok. So, this is a linear linear function of x n minus 1. So, 
what this means is that your uh, the optimal policy at at time step n minus 1 should take the form some matrix multiplied by the state at that time all right now and you substitute this back in you actually can evaluate also uh, you can also evaluate j n minus 1 which is the value function as a function of x n minus 1 that turns out to be taking that turns out to take this form it is some x n minus 1 k n some k n minus 1 times x n minus 1 plus this expectation of w n minus 1 transpose q n w n minus 1. Now, what is this k n minus 1? This k n minus 1 is actually uh, something that we I, ok I will explain what is k n minus 1, but where did I get that last trailing term? That last trailing term is actually nothing but this term. This was the this was the trailing term that you picked up. The k n minus 1 is what will get constructed using this quadratic in x n minus 1, this quadratic in x n minus 1 and the optimal value that you would get after substituting u n as u n star that will become that being a function of x n minus 1. So, since u n uh, u n star is a linear function of x n minus 1 all these green terms will combine together to give you another quadratic in x n minus 1 right. So, this will also become a quadratic in x n minus 1 you can check that this the the expression is like this that k n minus 1 is equal to a n minus 1 into a n minus 1 transpose q n minus q n times b n minus 1 times b n minus 1 transpose q n b n minus 1 plus r n minus 1 the whole thing inverse b n minus 1 transpose q n the whole thing into a n plus q n minus 1 this is this is k n minus 1 right. But what is the lesson here? The lesson now is that your the value function now at time step n has also turned out to be quadratic ok. So, the value function at time step n has also turned out to be a quadratic function and so this so what do we also a quadratic so what we got in the previous time step what did we conclude when if the if the value function at time n was quadratic then the value then the value function at time n minus 1 also ended up becoming uh, uh, when the value function at time uh, then in computing the value function at time n minus 1 all you had, had to do was set derivative equal to 0 and you got a linear policy. Moreover what is happening now is that the value function at time n minus 1 is also turning out to be a quadratic this is also turning out to be a quadratic. So, as a result now the value function if I now put this back in into step n minus 2 then I would be able to repeat similar calculations. The if, if I put this back into step n minus 2 then also my value function at time n minus 2 would become quadratic and the policy at time n minus 2 would be linear in the state at time n minus 2 which is x n minus 2. So, so, so uh, uh, the the uh, so u n minus 2 star would also become a linear a should be would be linearly dependent on x n minus 2 and this would go on and I would therefore be able to recursively work back all the way till the uh, till time step 0 where again I would be solving some sort of a quadra some quadratic optimization. Uh, it is of course true that your uh, the hessians of these quadratics and the coefficients involved all of them continue to get complicated but but that is much better than having a non quadratic optimization right. So, the beauty of this particular problem structure is that this in there is this inherent invariance that you start off uh, when when you have a quadratic cost and and linear dynamics the the there are a lot of nice coincidences that come into play in such a way that the complexity that of the problem does not change as you go backwards uh, through the dynamic programming algorithm 
the you continue to keep getting quadratic functions quadratic optimizations and you continue to get linear policies right so this the this 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 helps you very elegantly find the optimal cost function optimal value um, uh, and optimal policy right so as so this can so to for completeness let me state this here so hence jn minus 2 will also be a quadratic and u n minus 2 star be linear right let us like this l n minus 2 times x n minus 2 for some matrix l n minus 2. So, for a, I will give you the formula also for l n minus 2. So, this there would be therefore, this kind of a relation right and moreover hence this will also be quadratic. Hence, for each k, j k will be quadratic and u k equal to l k times x k will be the optimal policy. So, what is this L k? The L k uh, is this term, the L k actually can be given this way, L k is negative of B k transpose k, k plus 1 B k plus R k, this is a capital K, this is a small k please note, inverse B k transpose k k plus 1 a k. What are these k k's? They are k at time n is just simply q n and the k's at every time can be computed recursively in this way. So, k at time small k is equal to a k transpose k at time k plus 1 minus k at time k plus 1 b k transpose into b k transpose k at time k plus 1 plus r k whole inverse b k transpose k at time k plus 1. the whole again into a k plus q k and what would be the optimal cost? The optimal cost is j 0 of x 0 which is equal to x 0 transpose k 0 x 0 plus. So, this is your the initial uh, the cost due to your initial state and plus these terms that you were picking up at each step. If you recall we were picking up one quadratic variance like term for the w's. So, that is exactly the term that you would accumulate at each step. This would be the optimal cost as a function of x 0. So, it turns out that the optimal cost is also quadratic as a function of the initial state. Right? So, very several nice things happen as a, in this problem. The optimal policy turns out to be linear. So, this is so, u k is equal to, so maybe I will write it here. So, the optimal policy is, the optimal policy is, is to simply apply l k on x k, just this lin application of the linear of a, uh, of a matrix on the state, right. And the state, uh, the matrix itself can be computed 
through this matrix K K, the this particular uh, equation is what is called the Riccati equation. Okay, this equation is what's called the Riccati equation. The uh, through that equation you can comp recursively compute the KKs and substitute them back in uh, to get your optimal policy. Now, here uh, there are a few other things to note here which are not related much to optimization, but uh, but something more again about this this structure. See notice that L k has no dependence on the W's. You notice the way the noise appears in the problem is that it somehow drops out of a lot of the calculations and only keeps adding up as a term as you know an additional term here. So, if the noise was deterministic means the variance was 0 this term would vanish uh, this last term would vanish and you would be left with just uh, you uh, um, uh, you know you uh, what you would be left with is just simply this uh, uh, this this particular term x 0 transpose k 0 x 0 where k 0 would have to be calculated recursively through this Riccati equation. Uh, but look at the uh, look at the uh, amazing result here that U K is U K star the optimal policy to take that of optimal policy or the optimal action to be applied is simply L K times X K. So that means whatever be the state, you just apply this particular matrix, and this matrix itself has no dependence on the noise on the variance of the noise. So the noise makes no appearance in the calculation of this matrix. So if you see the K K recursion. The only things that appear here are the R's, the Q's, the A's and the B's and the W's have make no appearance here whatsoever. So, which means that the Riccati equation is the same regardless of whether you have noise in the system or you do not have noise in the system, which, which also means therefore that your feedback or the optimal policy that you have to choose is also the same regardless of whether you had noise in the system or not. This is again an amazing miracle actually that comes about due to this particular problem structure. It is effect it is effectively telling you that you can pretend as if there was no noise whatsoever and continue to apply the same control that you would have or the continue to apply the same policy that you would have in the absence of noise. Okay. In the absence the policy that you would have applied in the absence of noise you just continue to apply the same policy in the presence of noise but on the state that would get realized in the new system of course you don't take the same actions necessarily because the state itself would be different but the plan or the strategy or the policy that does not change uh, due to the presence of the noise so the only way the noise affects is that it keeps adding this little offset term to your cost function to your to your optimal cost which uh, which uh, the, uh, which depends on the variance of uh, variance of the noise so it keeps adding this little bit of a uh, you know um, an error due to uh, uh, a, a error due to um, uh, due to noise in some sense uh, or an offset due to noise but it does not affect how you are going to steer your system right so this the, so this this because of all of these reasons this particular problem structure is a is a pet problem or a favorite problem across many disciplines operations research control and so on many people have uh, have applied this uh, 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 in fact, much more deeper coincidences are come into play in, in more general problems uh, again with quadratic cost and so on, and but that is a, that's a subject for later. Uh, so, with this I am also uh, I, I also end the content of this course uh, there is uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, this 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 forms essentially gives you a way or by which you have you can relate. Uh, deterministic optimization and dynamic optimization. There are other ways also of re relate, uh, relating the uh, relating deterministic and uh, uh, dynamic optimization. Those are for for instance, there is something called as the a minimum principle of dynamic dynamic optimize uh, dynamic control problems or dynamic optimization problems, and that can be obtained through KKT conditions in um, uh, KKT conditions. That is something that uh, is beyond the, the uh, purview of this course, but this is something that you can look up. Okay. As uh, my uh, my uh, all my uh, credentials are there on the NPTEL website. If you would like to get in touch with me about 
any problem you are working on if, or if you would like to talk about anything, uh, feel free to get in touch with me. You can look me up also on the, on the internet. So, this brings us to the end of our course on optimization. We have covered a vast, uh, uh, vast uh, domain. We have started from uh, unconstrained optimization and uh, gone on to constrained optimization, KKT conditions and finally, we have ended up with uh, dynamic optimization. But the subject itself is much vast, is much larger than all this. It is it is an extremely uh, uh, evolved and well developed subject. If there is anything you would like to talk to me more about, feel free to get in touch with me. You can look me up on, uh, on, on Google. You can simply search for my name Ankur Kulkarni on Google and my web page should show up. Uh, where there you will find all ways of contacting me. You can also, uh, uh, you can email me at on on kulkarni dot kur at iitb dot ac dot in. So, if there is anything you would like to talk, I will be happy to respond. Do get in touch. Thank you for this course.